Hello, this is Robert with Sparkfun Electronics, and this is your course preview for ABC 2013. Things are going to work a little bit differently this year as we're not actually at the building. We're going to be out here at the Boulder Reservoir in Boulder, Colorado. In years past, we've actually scored all the robots based on the fastest time, and the fastest time won, and it was that simple. This year, we're changing it up a little bit, and we're moving over to a point system. So by completing a run, you will accrue X number of points, and you will have three total runs, and whoever has the total most points for the day will win, and we'll have first, second, third place for each vehicle class. So how it's going to work for ground is you will start out with a bucket of 300 points. For every second that you are running the course, you will deduct one point from those 300. So if you complete the course in, let's say, 60 seconds, you will be left with 240 points for that run. Now we will also have bonuses along the course that will be added to your total bank of points. So your time points will be strictly based on time, the bonus points will be strictly based on the bonuses that you accrue for running the course. The bonus points do not matter and they're not affected by you completing the course or not. So if you go past the first corner and go through the hoop and then explode into a ball of flames, you will still get those bonus points, but you won't get any time points because you didn't actually finish the course. In years past, we've had a very defined course. It's basically just go around the outside of the building. Well, we don't have a building here, so we've actually set up all these stanchions and actually roped off the inner part of the course. The idea this year is all you have to do is go on the outside of these four yellow stanchions. That defines the outside part of the course. We've also marked up all these red stanchions that are as kind of a guide as the inside of the course. We've actually taken all the dimensions of this course so we can tell you how wide everything is, how far away all the barrels are set up, and exactly how the course is gonna be day of. Check the link in this video as well as the AVC site for this year and we'll have all the downloadable GPS information you need. But to qualify for a complete run, you just need to go on the outside of these four yellow stanchions. And they are the only things that are yellow on the course, so if you're using any kind of object detection, you can look for the yellow barrels. Each one of the yellow barrels will actually account for 25 bonus points. So if you go around the first corner, even if you don't complete the run, you will get 25 points for that run. So here we are on the first straightaway, and we've got the first set of obstacles that you have to overcome. These are the same red barrels from previous years. There will be four of these barrels spaced along this first run, and we have full dimensionals for you to show you exactly where they're going to be spaced. They will not change the day of, and they will be set up exactly like this for the day of the race. So here we are at the second yellow stanchion, which is the second turn, and we're going to go into the second straightaway. The second straightaway is actually a little bit wider than the first. This one is 50 feet wide. Wide, where the first straightaway was only 40 feet wide. We've got a hoop in here, so we're giving you a little bit extra room to navigate around it. We've painted this green, and you will get bonus points if you choose to go under the hoop. You do not have to for it to be a successful run, but you will get bonus points if you do. So this is the third yellow stanchion that you will encounter, and this will be the third checkpoint, and you're almost on your way home. You're on your way to the third stretch. If you're looking for more bonus points, check out the ramp. The ramp is a new addition to this year. This is right after you come across that third turn, and this will gain you another 50 points in bonus. So we're approaching the last and final turn, and we've got a little bit of an obstacle right here. The course is 40 feet wide, but narrows down to 21 feet wide with these two curbs. What you're going to want to do is actually go on the left-hand side to avoid the curbs. So here we are at the fourth and final turn, and this is the last turn that will get you 25 bonus points. This year for AVC, we're going to have four distinct vehicle classes for the ground competition. First up is the Micro or PBR class. This is any robot that is $350 or less, or small enough to fit inside a 10 by 6 by 4 inch box. The doping class contains the biggest, the baddest, and the most expensive vehicles that you can enter. It will garner the highest prize, and it's any vehicle that's over $1,000 dollars or weighs more than 25 pounds. Have a vehicle that's more than $350 but less than a thousand? You would belong in the Peloton. These are all the remaining vehicles that don't fit into either the micro class or the doping class. The majority of vehicles would fit into this category. Does your vehicle rely on something other than traditional four-wheeled ambulation? Do you have a walker, a modified self-balancing pogo stick, or even a motorized hamster ball? non-traditional locomotion category is for you. And finally, if 80% of your robot has been built by students high school age or younger, you're eligible for the student class award. Your vehicle can fit into any of the other classes, but if it was designed primarily by students, you can win an additional award. 
So in addition to doing the ground differently this year, we're going to be doing the aerial portion a lot differently this year as well. We're actually going to be running the ground and the aerial simultaneously in different venues, but very close to each other. Just back over there is where the ground venue is, and over here is where the aerial venue is. As you know this, that's water. So all the gravel that you see here is going to be the takeoff and landing zone. In years past, we've allowed manual takeoffs. This year, we're only allowing autonomous takeoffs. So you must be able to autonomously take off. And when you take off, you will go out this way and stay within the fly zone. And we have this little peninsula out here. That is your checkpoint. You have to make it to the peninsula, come back, land in the landing zone, and that counts as a run. As with previous years, you can either land manually or autonomously. That is up to you. The only thing that you have to remember is if you're going to be landing manually, you still have to autonomously pass over the landing zone. Then you can regain control and land your aircraft. The idea is that we want you to take off autonomously, fly around, hit the checkpoint, come back, and make a complete circuit autonomously before you end up landing. As with the ground section, we do have a couple bonuses that you can hit. Autonomous landing is a bonus. Autonomous landing within the first part of this zone, it's going to be essentially the first half of the zone, will have a bonus attached to it. We also have a very interesting bonus this year. We're going to have a drop. On that peninsula, the last tip of it, if you can drop a tennis ball and hit the land, you will get a bonus as well. As with the bonuses for ground, these bonuses will stick with you regardless of if you complete the run or not. So theoretically, if you take off, go straight to the peninsula, make a successful drop, and then crash, you will still get the bonus points for making that successful drop. The payload is going to be a standard tennis ball that we will provide the day of. So if you need to do any modifications, you will need to do them quickly and the day of, and make sure it remains just a tennis ball. So for instance, if you want to have like a little eye hook that you screw into it that you can just drop it easily, that is perfectly fine. If you like severely modify the thing to where it's not really a tennis ball anymore, you can be disqualified for that. But we will be providing the tennis ball and we will ultimately judge if your payload is still legitimate or not. In addition to the drop, we also have a little wicket to go under. The wicket is going to be about 30 feet wide by 20 feet tall, and it'll be over there on the approach to the landing zone. So if you can actually make it underneath that wicket before you land, you'll get additional bonus points. Similar with ground, you will have the bonus points and you will also have the time-based points. With aerial, we're actually giving you a bucket of 600 points to start with and one deducts every second. So you'll start out with 600. Whatever you have left over when you land, you'll receive those points for a successful run and then in addition to all the bonus points. And of course, you will get three total runs for the day and you will lump all those points together to end your final score for the day. The time points are calculated as such. When I say go and hit my stopwatch, you will go and your plane will go in the air autonomously, fly around, and then the points will stop when you actually come to a complete stop. It is not when you touch the ground, but it is when the plane or quad or whatever comes to a complete stop, then your time points will end. So if you want to do a manual landing, it will count once you have fully landed, not when you cross over the box. So there you have it, our course preview for AVC 2013. We hope to see you out June 8th at the Boulder Reservoir. And if you need any more details, go to avc.sparkfun.com. You can go there to register, view the rules, and view all the other information you need to know about AVC 2013. See you then.